the world in review the whole story world in review news without the humanistic bias world in review analyzing and reporting world in review education and information world in review from a biblical perspective the world in review with your host wally wood the world in review The World in Review and the Revelation File Report are joint productions of Wallywood Ministries, a Houston-based tax-exempt nonprofit educational ministry based here in Houston. In our reports, we use articles and videos and material from both the internet that are copyrighted and from our own library of resources. And this is part of our copyright and fair use doctrine that uh, we put forth with each program for the sake of those who are who need this information on YouTube and other sources that we broadcast to. And we thank you. I'm Wally Wood, and we welcome you into this edition of the Revelation File Report. When we were last with you, we talked about madman politics and having to do with uh, Mr. Putin's invasion of the Ukraine. It's been in the news every day since he did that. But we also took it into the deeper elements of Bible prophecy for the last days, having to do with the prophesied invasion of what's known as Gog and Magog into the nation of Israel, into the land of Israel. And we surmise that this would be the upcoming invasion of Russia and her allies into the Middle East and the madman politics that would bring that about and how eccentric such a leader would have to be to make that move. So you can go back to our previous uh, program on that and watch that for yourself for more information. Today we're going to take a closer look at the digital dollar. Uh, Mr. Biden recently issued an executive order uh, commissioning the federal government to investigate and to bring about a true cryptocurrency system for the United States of America. So we're going to look at that. We're also going to take a look at what's called micro flyers, flying microchips. I think that you'll find that to be interesting as well. Concerning the executive order, number 14067, it was signed by Mr. Biden on March 9th, 2022, uh, calling for uh, ensuring responsible development of digital assets, according to the White House website that you see here, and we show the address that you can go to to read this document for yourself. The uh, CBS News made note of it as well. Biden issues executive order to explore cryptocurrency like digital dollar. Get that term in your mind because that's the, the new direction we're headed into a digitized dollar. Uh, we also have one from yahoo.com news. Biden issues crypto executive order. And here's what it means. <clears throat> the CNET money. Will the U.S. have a cryptocurrency? What to know about Biden's bid for a digital dollar. Here's how the White House is setting the stage for a federal digital assets policy. And there you again, you have the addresses that you can go to. Investor Place, U.S. Digital Dollar News. Is America moving to virtual currency? What is a CBDC? And we'll answer that question in just a moment. From Investor Place, we quote, a U.S. digital dollar is on the way with the Federal Reserve revealing details in a new paper. According to this report, the Fed is looking to introduce a U.S. digital dollar called the Central Bank Digital Currency, or CBDC. This would allow citizens to download and use an app for payments. It's also worth mentioning that the U.S. government would need a major overhaul of its financial networks to avoid cyber attacks. I would say so, yes. So when can we expect the CBDC to start showing up on smartphones? Bank of America says that a U.S. digital dollar is inevitable and will likely appear between 2025 and 2030. That's how close we are to this. What is a central bank digital currency? A central bank digital currency is the digital form of a country's fiat currency. A CBDC is issued and regulated by a nation's monetary authority or central bank. Now, 
real quick, what is a fiat currency? It's a currency that has no backing in special metals like gold or silver. It's strictly based on one's trust of the federal system that issues that currency. Fiat is based on nothing. It's supported by nothing. Continuing with Investor Place, the introduction and evolution of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology have created further interest in cashless societies and digital currencies. Thus, governments and central banks worldwide are exploring the possibility of using government-backed digital currencies. When and if they are implemented, these currencies would have the full faith and backing of the government that issued them, just like fiat money, just as I explained just a moment ago. That's the definition of fiat money. It has no real backing in uh, precious metals. It's strictly trust in the governing agency, the governing body that issued that particular currency. So it's definitely a part of our future. If you go back and look at some of our programs, you'll find that we talked about how COVID is a major driver in this direction that digital currencies are germ-free <laughs> and uh, the fear of the public in uh, passing germs and receiving germs on hard currency is extremely high. I work in the retail industry and I can tell you that people are very, very uh, anxious when it comes to the possibility of uh, any kind of pandemic viruses being passed by hard currency. And so we're right in the mainstream of this conviction that cryptocurrency is the wave of the future. We, I point you to our website, digenomicscentral.com, trending digital economics in a digitized world. Built for the future, evolving now, is on the front page of that website. The all digital economy is here and is expanding to ultimately replace all tangible currency. In today's transitions, the only question that remains is, when will the total transformation take place? In my 1972 and 74 book called Cashless Society, A World Without Money, I talked about how this new system, this new world of no currency would look. And I predicted at that time that there would come a central computer that would oversee all of our financial transactions. And you see the whole story right there on our website at digitonomicscentral.com. I point out the fact that Visa is to join the digital dollar. They've already committed themselves to this. Visa partners with Ethereum Digital Dollar, according to Forbes magazine on uh, December 2nd, 2020. That, quoting, Credit card giant Visa today announced it is connecting its global payments network of 60 million merchants to the U.S. Do dollar coin, or USDC, developed by Circle Internet Financial on the Ethereum blockchain. The digital currency is now valued at $2.9 billion. We have pictured here Visa's chief executive, Al Kelly, and quoting from him in Market Watch. Quoting, we're focused on putting cash out of business, he said. And this was quoted in June 2017 on Market Watch. And there they talked about moving into a cashless world. So the commitment has been there for a long time. And this is part of that drive into what Mr. Biden has now issued as an executive order. The Digital Dollar Project exploring a U.S. CBDC issued May 2020. It is a PDF uh, document, 50 pages long, produced by Accenture, which is partnering with these other entities to bring about a digital dollar. Quoting from, and you, here's the website that, that you can go to at Accenture in their newsroom, uh, newsroom.accenture.com to read about this and to download the PDF Adobe Reader version of this project. Quoting from their introduction, a new technological age is unfolding, bringing with it the digitization of things of value that can be tokenized, programmable, 
and decentralized. Across the globe, governments and private entities are experimenting with tokenized commodities and central bank digital currencies. That is a CBDC. Further, this wave of digital currency innovation is still gaining momentum. The launch of a tokenized digital dollar is a logical and critical next step to future-proof the dollar and enshrine its democratic values in the future of money. Successfully creating a, dig a digital dollar will be an enormous undertaking that should be done carefully in a thoughtful and deliberative fashion." End of quote. So here you, we have the commitment. So you might as well prepare yourself for the arrival of the digital dollar, replacing the cash and the coins that are in your pocket. And uh, this is an introduction into the future of money as even the Bible predicts. And I suggest that you turn to Revelation 13, verses 16 through 18, for the new digital economic system <clears throat> that is coming. Revelation 13, verses 16 through 18, talking about this mark in your flesh and how you would not be able to buy or work without that digit. So, we've covered madman politics, and we've just covered the digital dollar that is soon to arrive at our banks and in our pockets and in our watches. It still amazes me today that people are using smart watches to pay for items at the grocery store. And this was something I wrote again in my original book on the Cashless Society. I talked how people would use their watches to make payment at the checkout stand. So we're there now. Now we move on to something even more intriguing and uh, awesome, and that's micro flyers, flying microchips. Looking at Northwestern now, in the, uh, Northwestern University, winged microchip is smallest ever human made flying structure. Capture this. The size of a grain of sand, dispersed micro flyers could monitor air pollution, airborne disease, and environmental contamination. Again, let me point you to the website address, the URL at the top, that you can go to and read this for yourself. Northwestern University engineers have added a new capability to electronic microchips, flight. About the size of a grain of sand, the new flying microchip or microflyer does not have a motor or engine. Instead, it catches flight on the wind, much like a maple tree's propeller seed, and spins like a helicopter through the air toward the ground. By studying maple trees, and other types of wind-dispersed seeds, the engineers optimized the microflyer's aerodynamics to ensure that it, when dropped at a high elevation, falls at a slow velocity in a controlled manner. This behavior stabilizes its flight, ensures dispersal over a broad area, and increases the amount of time it interacts with the air, making it ideal for monitoring air pollution and airborne disease. As the smallest ever human-made flying structures, these microflyers also can be packed with ultra-miniaturized technology, including sensors, power sources, antennas for wireless communication, and embedded memory to store data. I don't know about you, but I get goosebumps reading this stuff. This is awesome. Quoting Northwestern's John A. Rogers, the, en the lead engineer on the project. Our goal was to add winged flight to small-scale electronic systems with the idea that these capabilities would allow us to distribute highly functional, miniaturized electronic devices to sense the environment for contamination monitoring, population surveillance, or disease tracking. And again, we've added the emphasis to this particular quote. Population surveillance captures my interest in this. It reminds me of smart dust, which is a subject that we covered a number of our programs ago on our transparent world. Smart dust 
is a system of many tiny microelectromechanical systems, otherwise known as MEMS, such as sensors, robots, or other devices that can detect, for example, light, temperature, vibration, magnetism, or chemicals. They're usually operated on a computer network wirelessly and are distributed over some area to perform tasks, usually sensing through radio frequency identification or uh, RFI, RDI. Without an antenna of such greater size, the range of tiny small dust co communication devices is measured in a few millimeters and they may be vulnerable to electromagnetic disemplement and destruction by microwave exposure. Um, here you see a professor blowing smart dust in the air. Now, let me give you another little bit of background here. Smart dust has been used by the U.S. military since our days in Iraq. And it was reportedly used to uh, identify and locate Saddam Hussein in his hiding place in a hole in the ground. And what they do is that they broadcast through, by plane these smart dust particles that are the size of a grain of sand, and they float around the area, they settle in, and once they get settled, they begin to communicate with one another and network. And in this communication network, they pinpoint an epicenter of small dust gathered, and through that epicenter, they're able to communicate with GPS satellite. And from there, back to headquarters, where they're monitored by viewers of their operation. Here's the key. Once the smart dust gets on a person's clothing, that person can be tracked. And not just Saddam Hussein, but a number of key level terrorists have been identified by way of the smart dust on their clothes or on their shoes. Now this is absolutely miraculous and eerie and frightening, okay? So here we have microelectronics, flying computer chips that pretty much operate in the same manner that smart dust does. And I want you to see this video that we presented in our earlier presentation on our transparent world to give you a clearer handle and understanding of how smart dust operates. Watch. But in the future, every square inch of every city will be alive with intelligence. Because every street and every building will have a network of microcomputers built right into them. Dr. Chris Peaster calls it smart dust. A smart dust particle or moat is a wireless sensor with sensing, computation, communication, and power in one package. These all-in-one microcomputers will be small, very small. The size of a moat today is about the size of a grain of rice. And we've shown that we can make the circuitry small enough and light enough that eventually it will be possible to make things that are on a sub-millimeter size scale. Tiny specks of computer smart dust will form a vast invisible network that can help manage the infrastructure of even the largest city. Smart cities in the future will take this low power, inexpensive, small technology and basically distribute it everywhere. These tiny computers record information about their surroundings, information they can send to other computers or to you. Smart dust on the tracks will monitor your commuter train so you know if it's running late. Potholes will be able to report themselves and warn your car, and you'll never have to wait for a radio traffic report again. They're monitoring the flow of traffic and giving you alerts about what route is the right way to go to keep the traffic moving. Bridges will get a coating of smart dust particles that can warn us when they detect stress fractures, helping avoid deadly collapses. But smart dust will also allow buildings and streets to recognize you and respond accordingly. I think increasingly, the environment will respond to who we are and adapt in consequence. The city will know where you are if you want it to. Your workplace will know you. Smart dust at the entrance will boot up your computer. And smart dust embedded in the elevator doors will automatically ring your floor. Smart dust is going to sense the environment and allow us to improve the way that we live our lives. 
No matter how we live in the future city, it will be radically different. Smart dust. Market update from IoT Analytics concerning the Internet of Things. Despite the chip shortage and COVID-19's extended impact on the supply chain, the market for the Internet of Things continues to grow. In 2021, IoT Analytics expects the global number of connected IoT devices to grow 9% to 12.3 billion active endpoints. By 2025, there will likely be more than 27 billion IoT connections. The Internet of Things, things being connected to the Internet by way of sensors like smart dust. In the year 2000, I published my second book, The Embedded Internet, The Final Evolution, and you can find it at Amazon.com. In there, I made the comment, the day will come when the Internet will be attached to everything you touch and everything that touches you. And indeed, that is now the case. That is why I find such matters as micro dust and microelectronics, flying computer chips of great interest because it's all designed and intended to be connected to the internet. <clears throat> and already RFID chips are being installed in our clothing, underwear, shoes, jewelry. It's all part of that same scenario, that same world that we're rapidly moving into of centralized control, of the absence of, trans of uh, privacy, complete total transparency. We are the most transparent, surveyed, monitored civilization that history has ever known by way of this enhanced, advanced technology. Our transparent world, that's one of my websites, our transparentworld.com. When the privacy is gone, what then? And it all is based in scripture. You've heard me say this before, Revelation 13 is, in my book, the most technologically advanced chapter in the entire Bible. Everything in Revelation 13 will require technology to fulfill. And of particular interest on this subject of the Internet of Things and things of this nature, I quote from Revelation 13, 15, He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. And it raises the question in my mind, how will he know in a world of over 7.5 billion souls who is worshiping him and who are not? Through this technology, every human being on earth can be monitored. So capture this. Here we have a man who's going to declare himself to be God, and in doing so, make himself worthy to be so worshiped. The only way that that can happen is through advanced technology, and we're there. So, as you have in certain religions, you pause at a certain time of day to give homage to your God. Through this technology, if you do not obey that edict, you're immediately set up with a red flag. You immediately set off alarms. You're immediately caught on a global map. If you're moving around and you're not supposed to be, you're caught. If you're doing anything else, even in the way of what you say at that given moment, you're caught. From our cell phones, to our watches, to IOT connection on our bodies, you're caught. And it's amazing to me how blind we've all become to this. At every intersection on the street, you've probably never noticed this, there are lines drawn in the concrete. Those are sensors connected to traffic lights, but they're also connected to the computer in your car. And if your car has such computers as most cars do now, it's monitoring 
your travels, the speed you're going, the direction you're headed, things of this nature. I've heard some people say, well, I'll just get off the grid by putting foil around my, uh, my driver's license. And I've looked at them and said, that's okay. Now you have a driverless car on the freeway. <laughs> and don't think for one minute that's not going to sell flags. So this is the kind of world that Jesus prophesied would exist at the time of his return. And we are very sincere and serious about bringing this to your attention to let you know the times in which we are living. I would suggest that you get back into the Word of God, study Bible prophecy, learn what the Scriptures are saying about the times we're living in, because there's a reason you are here and that I am here for such an hour as this. Thank you for watching. I hope that you have been impressed and intrigued by this. And come back and join us again for another edition of the Revelation File Report. You have been watching the Revelation File Report with Wally Wood, a Wally Wood Ministries production from Houston, Texas. You are able to support the ministry by donating at wallywoodministries.com and by mail at Wally Wood Ministries, P.O. Box 42005, Houston, Texas 77242. Wally is available to present full two-hour forms in your city called the Revelation File News Forum. For more details, contact Andy Valdez at 713-560-3348 or by email at andy at andyvaladez.com. The Revelation File News Report is a weekly update of global trends in the news as it aligns with end-time Bible prophecy. Tune in again next time and be sure to like and share this channel.